So thank you for joining the Business Game Plan Workshop. Um, we're excited to have you here and we hope that you know you will get the best um, use out of this workshop. Uh, my name is Sekinat, Sekinat Alao, and I'm a product analyst at Leo9. So basically what that means is I try to put the ideas together into tangible products that our clientele can you know, um, benefit from. So our clientele like business owners and also you know, employees at corporates and, you know, employees in general, basically. So um, I have a health background, but I've been in business for about five years because I had my own business. So I'm really passionate about businesses and, you know, seeing businesses thrive. And so it was only, you know, it was a no-brainer to join U9, um, who at the core um, of their mission is to actually empower businesses to maximize value. Right, so just to give, give a brief in, introduction about Leo9, um, like I said, we empower businesses to maximize value through our financial advisory services, our financial training services, and now incubating technology-powered financial business solutions. So when I mean financial advisory, we do stuff around oh, um, helping startups um, value their company, do financial modeling projections, you know, just playing around with their numbers to see how profitable or how they can have efficient um, operations. We write business plans for businesses and we do a whole lot of other stuff around advisory. We also do financial training, which involves, you know, training um, employees and even business owners on productivity tools um, such as Microsoft Excel. Um, we do Power BI, basically train you on what you can use to, you know, help your processes more efficient, get the best use of your tools, especially as it relates to Microsoft. Um, then now we're incubating a financial business solution in, term, in, in, in terms of like invoicing and also financial management. And this is going to be mainly focused um, for um, businesses, small and medium-sized businesses. So the aim is, you know, it makes your work more seamless. So now we are, we are, we are currently in the testing phase and Hopefully you are able to also key into it um, after this workshop. We might introduce it to you briefly. Um, we also have um, an arm where we are trying to incubate like businesses or trying to reach out to businesses that might need um, loans to propel their business um, forward. Right. So that's the brief about what we do at Leo9. So for today, what is our agenda? What are we going to walk through? We are going to walk through your business overview. And if you're just starting out, that's fine as well. You know, just take the lessons you can take from it. And, you know, until we move on to the phases where, you know, yeah, you can really, really get the maximum benefit. Then we're going to move on to the SWOT analysis, um, which is going to be taken by my colleague, Ibrahim. Um, the business model, which will be taken by Hanif, and um, we'll move on to goal setting and action, which I will be taking. And lastly, we'll be looking at the financial projections, which Hanif will be taking um, again. Right, so um, I guess I could just briefly, my colleagues will just briefly say hi to everyone on the call, you know, just to, so we have Ibrahim, we have Habib, we have Mubina, we have Alayinka, and we have Anif as well. So I guess you guys can say hi to the participants. Hi, guys. Good morning, and thanks for joining us for today's workshop. I'm actually looking forward to it. And obviously, before we get started, it will also be nice to get to meet you guys and then learn a bit more about your businesses. So looking forward to that, and welcome once again. Thank you, Hanif. Um, yes, yeah, so to move on from that, so the next thing is, you know, you know about Leonai now. You've met, you've met me virtually. You've, um, Hanif has also spoken. So we'd like to hear from at least one or two of you um, what's your business or who you are, what your business is about. I know we have um, a couple of businesses. Most of the businesses actually that signed up by in the, uh, in the service um, industry. And I know like you range from like agriculture to to IT, you know, to architecture and like so it would just be nice to um, get a feel of um, what you do and um, why you're here, why why you'd like to attend this workshop. All right. So I know Abu Kafar is here. So Abu Kafar, can you just give a brief introduction about your, yourself, your business 
and what you hope to get from this workshop. Okay, good morning all. Um, so I am Abdulgafar Okotsu. I'm a civil structural engineer and I run a civil structural consulting firm. So um, prior to me running the civil structural consulting firm, I was working at I was working with a consulting firm in Lagos and uh, over the lockdown I realized that um, what I do in the office there I, I don't have to sit in the office to do it and I can start something on my own. So last um, at the beginning of this year I turned in my resignation to to start part of my own. So that's basically what other things I can I can try my hands in and um, if uh, looking for other opportunities outside of civil engineering or even where uh, we ca I can integrate uh, my knowledge from civil engineering into um, other other business opportunities. Okay. Okay, cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Hopefully you're able to get um, those insights as we go. Thank you. Um, Abdul Rafi? Are you here, Abdul Rafi? Hello. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Good morning. Um, can I, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, you are breaking up a bit, but I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you, Abdurrahim. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Hello? I can hear you. Can everyone else hear after Rafi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. So um let me try it. Okay. Hello, my name is Abdul Rafi Abdelani. Uh okay. My name is Ab Okay, my name is Abdurrahman. I'm a student. Okay, the line is breaking. Can I can't have lost economist? I actually you are breaking up. I can't. I can't hear you. Hello? I can't hear you. You're breaking. You're breaking off. So I can't hear you. Um, but I did get that you're an engineer. So that means we have at least two engineers on the call right now. <laughs> okay. So I think we'll just move on, and um, you know we'll take it as it goes. Uh, yeah, if I may suggest, Rafi, you can drop your introduction in the message area and then okay. maybe try to get a stronger um, network location whilst we move on. Yeah, righty. So can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. OK, fantastic. Right. Yes. All right, thank you. So while we're here, um, basically, um, like I said, it's a workshop to kind of provide clarity on your business, you know, for the for the coming year in 2022, because you you want to you don't want to go into 22 without thinking, pausing to actually think, okay, this business I am into or I'm, I'm about to start, you know, what are the moving parts? What what do I need to put in place? A plan doesn't mean that it's not going to like life will not throw you curveballs or things will not change especially in our climate right but just having a plan kind of 
makes it easier to, even if you get curve balls, you're able to meander your way and get back on track. So Alan did say that to be a successful business, you need to have a plan. You need to know what to do next, right? Not what to do in like 10 years or five years. You just need to know like the very next thing that you need to do and build momentum from that. So if you know how important a plan is, um, why do you now want to leave your business to chance? And I don't say this, uh, because I feel like I have it all. Um, I have it all. No, it's from my own experience as well. So like I said, um, I established my own business um, before I joined you and I established my own business in 2017. And I can tell you for sure that I did not have like a concrete plan. Yes, I had a logo. I had a nice color palette and all that, but I definitely did not have a concrete plan. And that really, really affected um, me for sure. So I'm going to share like a short story and um, so, so that you can just really get a good sense of, you know, why planning is important. So in 2017, I had a baby, right? And, you know, before you have a baby, you, are, you have like a whole range of um, emotions. You are excited, you are fearful, you know, you do some research here and there, you know, and maybe you buy stuff maybe way ahead or even towards the time um, of delivery. Then the baby comes and, you know, for the first few days, you're all, all yeah, you know, you're in love and all that. And after a while, the reality starts to sink in. You start feeling overwhelmed. You start feeling when you get into the day to day of everything, you start feeling overwhelmed. And that was what happened to me, right? I did love, I love my baby, right? I did love my um, my child. But after I started feeling overwhelmed, I felt like things were going out of control. And that was because, you know, the reality on ground, when my baby actually came, I did not have like concrete plans on, okay, how do I, how do I set this baby up for, you know, having the perfect development? How do I walk around? This is a new being, right? This is an addition to what I, I was already. So I needed to create a plan. I needed to have a routine. And once I was able to do that, right, I was able to have more structure. I was able, I felt less overwhelmed, right? I was able to say, okay, this is what I wanted for my child. And from there, I decided, to, I, I started to plot a strategy around, okay, this is the kind of meals I want my child to eat. This is, you know, I want my child to eat only. I don't want my child to be, you know, sugar addi addicted. This is, you know, this is how the, my caregiver should take care of my child. You know, I had all those plans in place. I started to think about all those things. And from there, I put up a routine and things were a lot more easier. So if you substitute the baby, like I said now, with your business, right? Your business is like your baby as well, right? If you, in your day-to-day, -day, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. But when you have a plan in place, once you're able to say, okay, this is where I'm going to, right? Then you think around, okay, how do I, how do I achieve this thing? Then you now put down an action plan, which could be a routine in terms of like, oh, your day-to-day -day activities. It makes it way way easier and even if like maybe one or two days you go out of sync it's still because you have that plan you are able to come back um and focus right so that just shows you how um important you know planning is right so the very first thing that we're going to do is a business overview so you're looking at your past and present because to look forward to move forward you have to look you know you need to know your current stance. You need to know what, ha what has happened in the past. What can I take from the past and move forward? Or am I just even leaving everything behind, right? So what are the key strategies for um, the key ingredients before you can even start thinking or formulating a strategic plan? So a very um, three key things that a lot of businesses overlook, like I said, from experience as well, is their vision, their mission, their values, especially as small business owners. So we, we see all these things that, you know, um, two things that large corporations have, but they are also very vital for small businesses, right? Your vision, your mission, your values have to, you don't have to have everything all figured out. And over time, these things change, especially like the mission, um, but from the get-go you should at least have you know what you're looking for what you you want to be you know how you're going to get to where you want to be and what are those guiding principles that you know um that anchor you on that on your journey right so what is your vision your vision is future focus this is where your company wants to be 
in the nearest future, right? What you hope to achieve, what you know your ideal world would be if you know your, where your business is operating, what the ideal world would be like if your business is running at its full potential. And your mission is, you know, it's present focused. How is your company working today to achieve your vision? Right. And your values is also present because it's like your company's compass, right? You have where you want to go. You have the operations, what you are doing currently to get there. But you also have those guiding principles and anchors that tell you, OK, this is how you have to stay in check. These are some of the things that regardless of anything that is happening, these are the behaviors and actions that we want to exemplify and take us to where we are going to. So it's like your compass, your anchor. Um, for your company, particularly when you start growing um, um, to like a large size team. Right. So um, what, what are some examples of vision and mission statements? So I've written three um, vision statements here and um, I would like, you know, one of us to just guess. You can just pick anyone if you feel like, oh, which one is it? Who has, which company has this um, um, vision, uh, vision statement and it's open to anyone, right? You can just guess which company probably has this um, vision statement from what it is. Who wants to try? So the very first one is um, to provide access to what the world's information in one click. F whose um, vision is that? Can anyone guess? Oh, I, I, I want to guess Google. Google. Fantastic. Yeah, that's correct. Who wants to take a shot at the next one? So help people and businesses throughout the world realize their full potential. A bit big, but yeah, it works. Anyone want to try again? And the last one is to be the world's leading producers and providers of entertainment and information. Okay, so um, I'm just going to. Second move. one is Microsoft. Microsoft, yeah, yeah, correct. Thanks, Habib. All right. So this is. So I've just said like, oh, what it is, and I put their mission um beside it to so just kind of break it down because after this we're going to. I'm running through it now, and then we're going to have about five to ten minutes to attempt to um, create our own vision and mission. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Some um, companies, a company like Zappos, they actually use the whole year to come up with like their their values, you know, their their vision and their mission. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but just take a shot, right? So the very first one is for Google, like um, Abdurafi said. Um, the second one is for Microsoft, and the third one is for Disney. So um, Google's mission, so the vision is where, in an ideal world, what they would like to see, and that is they would like to provide access to the world's information in one click. And their mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally acceptable and useful. What they are doing currently to make that vision happen. I hope it's, um, it's kind of it's clear. Welcome to every, anyone joining right now. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just trying to look here. Yeah. Welcome, Mr. Uh... Hi, Mr. Uh, welcome. Um, we have just, we started about, say, maybe 15 minutes ago. Right, and we just gave a brief overview of why you know planning is very important for businesses, and um, we spoke about. Um, so now we're at the point where we say before we even formulate any plan or strategy, we need to work with what is our vision, what is our mission, and what is you know um, what is the organization's value. So because those are things that a lot of businesses do not put into consideration. We think they are fancy things for large corporations. But it's very vital because those are the things that keep you grounded, you know, as you go, as you know, the struggles of businesses and um, operations hit you left, right and center. Those are the things that keep you grounded and keep you motivated. Right. So we're just talking about the vision and mission of um, Google, Microsoft and Disney, just to kind of um, explain it further, saying that the vision is future forward in the sense that 
it is what you want your company to be in the future, right? And the mission is what you're currently doing now to achieve that vision. So it doesn't have to be, it changes. So sometimes it might change for people depending on, oh, maybe you need to pivot your business or maybe there's a new, um, so like during the COVID period, we saw that a lot of businesses had to actually, you know, change some things in their operations, the way they do it and all that. Some had to introduce some level of service um, to their business for those that were like solely product based and all that. So people had to move things around really. So some, most times the vision might, the mission might change over time, right? So again, for Disney, the, Disney's vision is to be, the, to be the world's leading producers and providers of entertainment and information. So that's their vision. They want to be leading producers of entertainment and their mission is to entertain, inform, and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling. And that's what we find. You know, most of us grew up with Disney. Our children, they're going to, you know, continue watching Disney and they tell stories. There are so many stories that, you know, they've told that are in our minds, like we can tell the stories from, from beginning to end. And that's just how powerful, you know, a mission and a vision can be. Right. So um, moving forward, so crafting your vision statement, right? How do you go about crafting your vision statement? The very first thing you want to think about is focus on your end goal. What is that output you want your company to give, you know, to your target audience? What is that thing that you want to achieve? So for Tesla, Tesla is saying they want to move the world to um, sustainable energy, right? So that is their output move the world closer to sustainable um, energy. So what is your own output? What is your end goal for your business, right? What is that thing you want from business? So for Leo9, we want, you know, we want businesses to try it, right? What is that end goal that you want to achieve? Where would you want your company to play in an ideal world? So in an ideal world or in, in an idea, for your business ideal, what, what will you be doing in the world for people, for your target audience? And the very last thing is think about where you, want, where you see your business in the next five to 10 years. So dream, right? Dream B, what is that? Where do you see your company? Do you see your company being um, the largest um, cosmetic brand? right do you want to be in you do you want to be all over africa or do you want to be all over the world what is what is it that you want your company to be in the next you know like a very very long time it's it's um i know microsoft has changed their um, vision over time but most times it stays for a longer while compared to like your mission so think about those three things what is your output what is the end goal of you know that thing that when you do it this is what you want to see you know, where would you want your company to play in an ideal world or in an ideal world? What would you like to see, right, as you re as it relates to your business and think about where you want, where you see your business in the next five to 10 years? Um, then in crafting your mission statement, you want to think about who, what, why, and possibly how, right? Um, and how can kind of be like what as well, because it's how are you adding value to them, right? So who? Who is your target audience? And it doesn't have to be extra, extra granular. So like the United States businesses, you know, um, Microsoft says they want the world or is the employees to fulfill their potential. So who is your target audience, right? Is it a segment? Is it just women? Is it, um, is it the service-based industry? Is it um, small businesses? Who is that target audience, right? Then what's will you be doing to add value to them? How are you going to be adding value to those target audiences? Are you going to be constructing um, maybe your target audiences, maybe corporate corporations? Are you going to be constructing world-class buildings with you know, some kind of out-of-the-world architecture? What is it that you'll be doing to add value to those businesses, right? And why? Why do you want to provide this value to this segment? And that, that's your own internal motivation. Why do you do... Why do you want to see that? So for you and I, we know that if businesses thrive, right, there's a ripple effect, right? There are more, there are um, people would, you know, there's more chances for employment. People will be able to come out of the poverty cycle, right? When businesses thrive, you know, the economy thrives as well. So that is like an internal motivation for us. So what is that why for you? 
what is it that and it doesn't have to be anything grand 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 but it just has to be something inspiring enough for you to want to push um for your business right so that is that about crafting your mission statement like i said we're going to attempt this but i just want to run through this um, because we're even a bit behind on time so that you can have about five ten minutes depending on the time to actually look at um what you want to um, craft for your vision and your mission it doesn't have to be perfect once again right and crafting your values right that's the very last thing so what behaviors or actions do you want your team members to embody so when you think about your business most times if you're like the sole business owner it's most times all these values they, they they stem from the business owners themselves but as you expand you also want to get your team members on board to say okay how do we what are those things that you know we would like to embody as a company what are those things that you want to guide us in the way that we you know execute our work we deliver our project what are those things that we want to embody you can get ideas from different people like i said a company like zappos used a whole year to get their values because they got like inputs from different people so you want to think but as a small business owner it most likely stems from you initially initially and it doesn't have to change but um i mean things that things are improving so now microsoft has um ai as one of their values right in the past they did not have that but because technology is changing things are changing technology is moving fast they have um, ai as one of their values actually it sounds ridiculous but it is what it is right then what actions will your customers expect from a company like yours so times you sometimes you need to look outwards to say my customers what is it that you know maybe based on my computers and all that what are those things that they would like to do expect to see is it spectacular customer service is it you know prompt delivery what are those things that your customers would like um to get from a company like yours so you can you know retreat and brainstorm and think about okay how do we bring it out to the value so most of us we just see the values honesty trust blah 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 but to make it more effective especially for you and you know your team members you need to actually explain what that means to you so if it is trust do you mean trust within your company and also the, you want your customers to trust you what it is what 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 is it define it don't just say trust trust is you know it can be anything right so what is it is it integrity is it integ integrity in the way you relate to your your customers and even within the firm what is that you know value just make sure you explain it out um it doesn't have to be one paragraph long and if it has to be one par paragraph long so be it but ideally it should be you know something very concise that people can easily read and you know it stays with them and your values are also things that you should actually have you know around embedded in like your internal branding and all that so that your your team members and even you yourself can always you know look at it and remember your guiding principles and the last thing you want to think about is what actions will keep you competitive over the long haul so what are those things that you know what are those actions the innovation is the learning what are those values what are those behaviors that over time regardless of you know the turf and changes if you keep doing these things right you have a chance at remaining competitive in your industry so what are those things um, that would help you so those are some of the things that you want to think about so there's a workbook that i had um created i don't know if you guys have it with you but it's fine if you don't also have it but you have those questions there where you know you want to take a, an attempt at your vision your mission and your value so um i think if does anyone have any question i can take like one question before we now look at you know crafting your own vision mission statement and values and if you have one already you know you can look at it again um does it still ring true you know is there anything i want to change and all that so um does anyone have any questions so far So we are ready to craft our vision, mission, and values. Hello. Can I second? Hi. Can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, hey, thank you so much. I had a an issue with my network and so many things. So I missed the difference between the mission and 
be sure. Or can you just go over it like one sentence or two? Okay, okay. So um, let me just look for this slide and just so that you can also see it. So I said that the vision is actually future focused. So your vision is where you want your company to be in the future, right? And the mission is present focused. What your company is doing today to get to that vision. So um, let me take Leonine as you know as an example. So our vision is to be the most trusted financial company in the in the whole of Africa, right? And we want to do that by making sure that businesses thrive. And how do we do that currently? We provide financial advisory services to businesses. We train you know employees of businesses in a way that they are able to make maximum use of the tools that are available to them, you know, so that they can work more efficiently. So that's our mission. That is how we are currently working to make sure that, you know, businesses maximize value, both for their internal members and also for their clientele, right? And what are the values? Values are also present focused. They are your company's guiding principle. They are your company's compass. They are like actions and behaviors that you want to guide both you and you know your team members or your employees right so and i also said that i gave an example of some vision statements so i said the, the very first one is to provide access to world information in one click that is google's vision statements so in the ideal world in the future they want to always provide access to the world's information in one click right that is their vision statement and i said that um, their mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And if you use Google, that is exactly what they are doing currently. Once you click on Google, you know, you get lots of, they've organized all this information for you and you're able to, you know, source for the information that you're looking for. Do you understand? So that mission, that is what they're currently doing to ensuring that, you know, the world has access to information in one click. Does that, does that, um, do you get it now? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. So I think now we are down to crafting um, our vision statement. So I'm just going to give um, about 10 minutes um, to attempt, and I'm going to ask for people to, you know, share what they've come up with. Um, yeah, so please attempt it. That's the only way that, you know, you can get the best of it. And I know that I didn't listen that sometimes when you do this workshop, you might not have, you know, a lot of time to actually go through it. So if you can, just make use of it now. Right. So who wants to go first? Who wants to share what they've come up with? Even if it's just the vision you come up with, or you're just your mission. Um, who wants to share? Um, I'll give Mr. Wright a break because she just came in. Um, Abdurrafi. Abdurrahman, are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry, I left okay. my I put my phone somewhere and I was writing somewhere else. Um, okay. So, um, what I have drafted so far. Mm -hmm. The vision for my car wash business will be to be the premium and foremost car detailing brand in West Africa. So I mean, the insight I got from you has helped them um, try to try to kind of um, focus what I'm trying to achieve. So I don't just want to be a car washer. I want to create a brand around car washing or car detailing. So to be in the premium car detailing brand in west africa is something i would love to as a vision yeah then mission i hope hope to achieve that by offering premium car detailing services using innovative and well-researched cleaning solutions then okay. um the value i hope to give my customers is paying attention to detail and conducting regular research on best detail practices globally and deploying the same okay that's what okay. I came up with so far. Okay, fantastic. Um, sounds really good. Sounds really good. Or um, what, uh, what do you guys think? Do you have any insights for Abdurrahman?
Habib, Ibrahim, Hanif, any insights? But I think I think that was good, at least so far for your first attempt. I think that was really good. Yeah, really? yeah, I like the I like the vision, right? Mm -hmm. I like the vision. I think on the values, um uh there might still be maybe some improvement that can be done in terms of that, right? Uh, and also making sure that, you know, as much as possible, those values also sort of tie to, to your vision and mission. And like um, Sakina mentioned, in terms of the habits and Sorry, actions. Sorry, I couldn't get that. And... It was breaking. Is it better now? Is the line clearer now? Rafi, can you hear me now? Mm. Looks like the line. Yes, I can. Okay, okay, I can. cool. I was I just saying that I like I like the vision, right? But I felt like maybe some improvement could be done on the values you stated. I think more importantly is to make sure that there's also some alignment in terms of the the vision and the mission, as well as the values. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that the values you've chosen are things that are very important in guiding your actions and behaviors and also that of the team. So for example, for a business that wants to, you know, set like to, um, a brand that does like premium service, like being the best, you know, quality is something that will be very critical. So having things around excellence might be important to note so that your guys know that we don't try to cut corners here. We try to make sure that we do the best work. You mentioned detailing as well. You know, that that has to do a lot with precision, excellent work. So it's not just, you know, trying to, you know, do 100 cars and then not do like the best work. So you want to put your best foot forward every time. So I feel like values that reinforce those sort of habits and um, and behaviors might be very useful. So I just felt like maybe a, a little more, um, you know, improvement could be done in that regard. But, but I like the I like the vision, and I think that's um, quite bold and important. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Hani. Um, right. So now we're done with the vision, the mission, and the values. Okay. Sorry. Right. So now, hopefully, we have a sense of you know how important you know, having a vision, a mission, and values are, and moving forward, we'll keep trying to refine. It's not something that you're just supposed to, you know, have and throw away. There are supposed to be things that, you know, you visit regularly to keep you motivated to pass the right message to your employees, for them to know how they can contribute to your own business. So you just don't want employees that are just, oh, let me just clock clock in and clock out. You want people that you know are able to key into your vision and know where they are able, where they fit in and how they can contribute to getting to that uh, vision. It doesn't mean that you know they cannot leave you or whatever, but at least when they are with you, they give in their best um, as much as possible. So again, like I said, you have to look at the past to move forward most often than not. So did you have um I didn't do it Good check, but I think from what I know, I know most of you is you're not fresh in business. So the very first question I would say is, did you have any goals for 2021? And you know, were they met or are there some that maybe you're still working on? So did you have any goals for your business in 2021? Abigafar? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you loud. Okay, so um, setting in, um, starting 2021, um, the business didn't really have a set out um, goal for 2021. So, and that's that's why um, going into 2022, we're looking at, okay, what's what do we aim to achieve in 2022? Okay. So we we don't have to run 2022 the way 2021 uh, we run 2021. So that's basically so basically now 
for 2021, there was no set out goal, but 20, going into 2022, we want to look at, okay, what are we going to set out maybe in the next six months in 2022, have we, have we been able to achieve that goal? And do we need to revise it if we are not able to achieve the goal? Okay, okay, fantastic. Um, so you're in the right place. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I think the whole idea is just to say, you know, what did you have? What do you plan for this year? And we can see that, you know, most times if you don't have a set out goal, you can't actually measure if you are actually inching forward or you can't really measure anything if you don't have like goals that you're looking forward to. So it's just trying to take stock. Okay, what has worked? What hasn't worked? So in your workbook, you know, um, you would see. So if you don't have, if you don't have a goal, that's fine. Um, but you can always, you know, use it towards next year. So there's a part about oh, what goals did you have and were they met? Yes or no. So just hold that, hold that thought. You know, those that were not met, those that were met. You know, just hold it and we'll revisit it again. And when we are going through the goal setting, but here is just, you know, taking stock of what has happened. So if you have goals, right, the very next thing is you want to have, you know, KPIs. And what are KPIs? Um, KPIs are like those key indicators of progress towards an intended result. So most times is quantifiable, is numerical to say, oh, um, last year I had 50 customers. This year, I have 100 customers. So for Abdurrahi, who this year was literally an experimental year, and even for Abdurrahi, it could have been, oh, I want to try this business out. Let me see if I can even get 10 people to patronize, you know, my service or my product, um, to buy my product. So that can be a goal, no matter how small it is, no matter what stage that you are in in the business. So that could be a goal. So once you now see, oh, I've actually hit 50 people, then that can send a signal to you to say, oh, I think I'm onto something here. Perhaps, you know, this is a viable business, you know, I can expand it forward or I can now, you know, put my all into it and grind. So, but you must have something to measure, right? So if you don't have, and that comes from your goals as well, if you do not have something to measure, chances are you will not get that thing done. And chances are, like, you just leave things to randomization. You're not doing anything, you know, in order. So there, there are two quotes that say, if you can't measure it, you can't track it. And what gets measured gets done. So if you don't track, if you don't measure something, you can't track to say, oh, am I going backwards? Am I going forward? Right. So those are, those are some of the reasons why KPIs are very important. And um, I didn't list so many. I didn't even list any, but it's in your workbook. There are quite a number of KPIs there. I'm sure if you want to think about KPIs, it might be up to like 100 KPIs that a business can, you know, measure. But of course, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. So you just want to pick the ones that are really, really important to your business, especially depending on the industry. So if you're a product-based industry, some, some things that you measure might not be necessarily what you measure as a service-based industry. And if you're doing both, then you need to know which ones are really important, which one really tells you, you know, what your how your business is doing and what you need to do moving forward. So some popular ones are like your sales, your revenue, you know, are, are you growing or are you declining? So if, for example, next year, for this year now, you take it, you take stock of how much sales you did. The next year, when you measure as well, when you compare, you can say, oh, we have grown or we have, you know, had a, a, a decline in revenue. You also want to look at your cost of goods sold, right? Whether you're a service-based business or a product business, how much does it take you to manufacture one, um, one hair product? How much does it take you to deliver a, is it a, pl a drawing plan or something for your client? How much does it take you to wash a car to do the detailing up from your like or oh, um, your labor cost and all that? How much does it cost you to do that? So from there, you once you know that to a T, you can subtract it from your revenue and that will give you like your profit margin, right? So there are quite a number of you know KPIs that you can you, you have like your marketing cost, your average monthly sales, you know your people cost. How much are you spending on your team? Is it reflecting in how much you are getting in? Or are you spending a lot of money on the team and you know your, your your income is not increasing? What has to change, right? Do you need to reduce or do you need to get, do you need to fire some people and get more effective people? You know, I'm not saying you should not fire anybody, but basically, you know, once you are able to measure and track it, 
you can be able to tell, okay, you can make, you are, you are able to make, you know, diagnosis to say, okay, this is working and this is not working, right? So, and so many other KPIs that you can track. So the idea is I've written some down for you in um, the workbook. So depending on your business, you find that some are more um, for product businesses and some are more for um, service-based business, but there are some that are universal, like I said, like your sales, every business, regardless of what industry you're in, has to measure sales and stuff like well, how many customers are you servicing right how many customers are buying your products how many customers come back with how many repeat customers do you have you know all those things are you know universal to both products and service based business so that's like the idea of you know, trying to tell you that you need to start tracking things and from when we do like the business model canvas then you can start getting an idea of some of the things that you also you know want to track as well Right. And um, so reflect on your wins, losses and lessons learned. Right. So um, brag about you know, your achievements. It doesn't have to be anything large. Even if, to even experiment is something big because there are a lot of people that have been, you know, they have been saying they want to start a business, but they haven't taken that first step. So for you to have taken that first step, that's a win for you. So you should actually be very proud of it. Right. Um, even if it's just one client that you serviced in here, that's something. Right. So, you know, especially if you've moved from one zero to one, you know, you should actually um, reflect on that and celebrate it and look at how can it, how can I make more wins? Right. If you've made any losses, you know, look at it. What happened? You know, what could what could I have done better? What was the cost of this um, loss? And, you know, how can I um, turn it around moving forward? And what are the lessons that you've learned? Right, so you can just write that in your workbook. You don't have to share it now, um, but just write that in your workbook so that it kind of reminds you of, you know, how far you've come and where you're going as well. So those lessons learned, you know, you can take them, take them into the next year. Right. So and the very, I think we're done. Yeah. So we are done actually. So thank you very much. We have gone ten minutes over time for this session, um, but I hope it has been beneficial so far.